Hi, I'm Gabriel Staples, the owner of ElectricRCAircraftGuy.com. And I'm laying in bed today because I'm pretty sick. My fever is about 100.5 right now, but I'm feeling pretty good compared to how I was uh, this morning um, around 2 to 4 a.m. It was uh, 104 degrees, and I probably should have gone to the hospital, but I, I didn't. And today I was... Uh, started to shiver and get cold, so I came to bed again, and it made me think about control theory. Your body, or my body, does is a closed-loop feedback controller for temperature. So I was thinking about how fevers work and what made me have a fever, and how that affects me, and I realized that uh, it was my shivering and the fact that I was being covered up or that I was covering myself up, which is what changed my temperature because my body was essentially applying a proportional gain uh, to indicate that I was cold according to what it wanted my fever to be to fight this infection. So I wanted to talk about that briefly. So first off, closed loop feedback controllers. Um, let's discuss inputs versus outputs. And I'll mention what the closed loop also signifies. So. Let's imagine that we have on the left our inputs or controls and on the right our outputs or uh, what we want to be controlled, what we are trying to get uh, to um, get to a desired end state. So on the input side, for instance on your stovetop, you have your heat dial uh, on your stove. And most stoves go from, I think, uh, 0 to 10 or 0 to 9. And that heat dial is your input. It controls not the temperature of the burner directly, but rather it controls the heat flow to the burner. So it's an open loop controller. You don't set the temperature and then let it decide how to change the heat to get the right temperature. Rather, you set the heat and then whatever temperature is going to be reached based on the load on the burner is the temperature that's going to be reached. Um, the load on the burner being consisting of the pot that's being heated, um, what, its, uh, what its propensity is to absorb the heat, and uh, how much heat flux is required to change it per unit degree Celsius, as well as the uh, surrounding air and how that's affecting the cooling of the burner. So, anyway, on the left side we have inputs or controls, on the right side we have outputs or indicators. So the indicator is temperature, the control is the heat setting. It's an open loop. So open loop signifies that you don't control the end state directly, you don't control the temperature directly, you don't control the right side directly, you control the left side directly. If, however, you wanted to make it closed loop, let's say that you're a human cooking at the stove, uh, you know, uh, that generally is the case, believe it or not. So you're at the stove and let's say that you want to get the temperature of the of some water in a pot warm but not boiling so what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip the burner uh, turn the burner on with the heat setting you might set it all the way up and you're gonna hold your finger in the water when it starts to get hot you're gonna turn the turn the heat setting down so you are now closing the loop on this feedback controller closing the loop means that you're changing the input in order to get a desired output so your desired output is warm but not boiling water you know warm enough or cool enough that you can keep your finger in it uh, so you are directly manipulating the heat setting in order to maintain the temperature at a desired state. Now this requires human input. Um, in controls and robotics you want to get away from human input and have these things autonomous via microcontrollers, uh, control um, control loops, closed loop feedback control loops that you write basically as sets of algorithms that run on a computer or a microcontroller or something similar. Now in the case of my fever Last night at about 10 p.m., my, my fever was maybe 101. Well, I started to get very, very, very cold. I, um, because of that, I, I went to lay in bed, and I started shaking totally uncontrollably. And this morning, after you know, I got my senses back and um, was no longer so miserable, I began to think about how my body is a closed-loop feedback controller. My fever wasn't controlling how I felt. Rather, how I felt was controlling my fever. So my body doesn't naturally all by itself raise my temperature. Instead what it did it is it applied a proportional input 
uh, proportional input to my heat sensory organs in my body to basically tell me that I was very cold. Telling me that I was very cold, my body knows that it's going to cause me to cover myself up uh, and get in bed. Additionally, it caused me to start shivering. So the combination of getting in bed, covering myself up, putting on a hat, curling up a little ball underneath the covers, and shivering totally uncontrollably for two hours is what heated my body up. So the input or the control was my sensory organs to touch and my shivering. Shivering uh, causes your, your muscles to um, tighten and release repeatedly, which gives you obviously the, the, sh the shaking motion, and the mitochondria in your cells will uh, act as little heat generators heating up your body. So, my body is a closed loop feedback controller for temperature. It caused me to feel very cold. It manipulated a control, essentially, to change the temperature. And so, I realized, or you know, I, I guess I determined later that the desired temperature that my body wanted to get to was 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, once my body reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit, I felt absolutely horrible. My eyes, uh, I was disoriented, but my body stopped shivering, and I felt more comfortable as far as cold went. And that is because the cold feelings that I was getting, that my body was giving me, were proportional to the desired output and the difference between where I was and where it wanted to get me. So as my temperature approached 104 degrees, the sensory input to my, um, to my cold receptors and my shivering was proportionally decreased by my body, by my brain, by the signals coming from my brain, brain to the muscles and, uh, and cold receptors in my skin and everything. And that is how closed-loop feedback controllers work. So my body is a big closed-loop feedback controller. It wanted to get to a temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, so it did that did that by making me shiver, making me feel very cold, both of which contributed to the temperature that my, uh, that my fever reached because making me feel very cold caused me to get in bed, turn on a heater, curl up in a ball, and put on a hat, and uh, shake and shiver for hours. Anyway, just wanted to share that little bit of knowledge, so now you know a little bit more about closed-loop feedback controllers, and hopefully I feel better. Uh, this has been several days now, and... Uh, uh, hopefully you can apply this knowledge to other things like UAVs, radio control aircraft, maybe even your own temperature sous vide, uh, your own temp closed loop temperature feed, your own closed loop feedback controller for temperature for a sous vide cooker or something to that effect, um, or uh, for a dog water warmer. Maybe your dog water is outside and you want to keep that dog water at uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So, or whatever that is in Celsius, maybe 5 degrees Celsius, uh, I'd have to do the calculation. Anyway, um, maybe 10 degrees Celsius or whatever that is. Um, uh, but anyway, this closed-loop feedback controller um, construct or idea, formula, algorithm, it can be used in all types of robotics, uh, laboratories, controls, air vehicles, um, ground robots uh, in any application that you see fit. Maybe you want to control altitude of an air vehicle, maybe you want to control speed. Each one needs to be its own closed loop feedback controller where you manipulate an input or a control to get a desired output or indicator. And that is all I have to say right now. So hopefully you enjoyed this and learned a little bit. Anyway, I will see you later. Oh, and don't forget please visit my blog, electricrcaircraftguy.com and be sure to subscribe using the link at the top right of my uh, website. I've got lots of articles there and I will only be adding more. Lots of them pertain to Arduino, parallel charging, radio control aircraft, um, beginner radio control aircraft, uh, set up with various tools and things you need, uh, restoring lithium polymer batteries that have been over-discharged, uh, getting a 0.5 microsecond resolution timer on an Arduino um, to replace the micros function essentially uh, with better resolution, uh, etc. So anyway, check it out, and uh, I will be resting. Thanks. Bye.
one more thing. I just wanted to make this clear. Your body temperature or your fever is the lowest it's going to be for a while when you are shivering the most. And it is the highest it is going to be for a while when you are shivering the least. Again, think about it. The way you feel, how cold you feel, and how much shivering is occurring is directly proportional to the difference between the, your current state and the desired end state. So if your body has already got your body temperature or your fever to its desired end state of 104 degrees, then your shivering will be stopped and you will no longer feel cold. You will feel comfortable because your body says, this is enough. Therefore, I am decreasing or, de or eliminating that input, that control, which says, shiver, be cold, because the desired state is reached. So, anyway, uh, that is proportional closed-loop feedback control.